We're here. Um, Egypt's playing yo, with yo. us though. Huh? Where really? did he go? But what's going on? Really. You know, Fuego, Prophet, Egypt, again. Yeah. Another we show. Prophet screaming out, Geo Loggers! For no reason. Sure. You know how we do. Screaming out, e Let me stop. He just did it. I just. <laughs> 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 anyway, yo. <laughs> it's a it's a great it's a great evening. Um Yeah it is. Yes it is. I have no okay. vehicle right now, so it's even you know, I have to make things to do, play shadow puppets, you know, shit like that. Just drink just drink until I think I went somewhere. You ever got that drunk? That's, Damn, what kind of drunk are you on? <laughs> I, that's pretty damn uh, I, I went game. back in the if y'all remember the days in the 757, if y'all remember me walking to get a deuce deuce. Oh, I actually wow. did that today. Walking wow. all the way wow. out there. It's actually closer than uh, than, than Farm Fresh was. But we walk, I would walk all the way out there. Then forget something. Have to go back. And go back. This motherfucker went back to 2003. Shut the hell! Well, no, that he and left, that's true. No, he left, yeah, he left, that's true. He left out like Mad Park because yeah, he used to walk to get a deuce deuce, but once he got there, he would hit somebody up, namely myself, talking about, hey, yo, hey, yo, you think I should get the highlight? Shut the or, hell up, yo! Or the Corona joint. And yo, I'd be like, yo, I still do that oh, shit. Oh, oh. He, said, he, said, he still does that to this day. He's like, should I get the Steel Reserve or should I get the OE? All First right. though, I don't drink malt liquor, everybody. So Pop is a liar. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, but anyway, oh yeah, it is dead. We got we got a lot of stuff going on. Um, yeah, we got an interview coming up with Jason Maravich, um, yes, aka sir. the uh, son of Pistol Pete. You know, legendary point guard, master of everything. You know who I'm talking about, everybody. So we will get a chance to highlight at dude. I had a chance to talk to him, you know, when I was going on trains and taking five buses not too the other day. <laughs> Let me stop. But it was, you know what I'm saying, he had a good, um, some good stuff going on right now. So we wanted to uh, bring him on the show to see what what's good with him. And um, as I told you guys, Egypt is playing with itself right now. So uh, we got to wait. Um, But yeah, man. Still waiting. Still waiting. Let me start. Did you, uh, are you able to see that? No, I can't. I'm going to try it on the other laptop. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Boy, Fuego Beats is mad today. As y'all know, Fuego. what happened? Who's mad? I said Fuego Beats is mad Man, today. Man, I, I, we're not talking, <laughs> we're going to talk about T. Wells, uh, Tim Story mixtape. You know, that's, uh, download, um, Fuego Beats, you know, hosting that joint, screaming out everything, Fuego, and all that. You know that, um, go to that piff and see Egypt when I said that P sound, the whole volume thing just like went outside and like blew up the screen or something. Cause I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but, but nah, but yo, the, the, the mixtape is hot. As y'all know, a couple of weeks back, Egypt and our prophet, you know what I'm saying? Blessed T Wells mixtape party. And, um, yes, it sir. went well. From what I see, I seen pictures sure. and everything. You know, them all hugging and everything. You know how that goes. Ah, you just mad. Uh -huh. uh, Yo, I didn't have to be there. I was there. In spirit. I was there. I wasn't there, but I was there, yo. I was with y'all. 
Y'all just didn't know I was with y'all. <laughs> Let me stop. He, was, uh, he had on the stealth, stealth camo. That stuff. damn right. I was in there and shit, smacking um, Prophet in the back of the head and screaming Shut out. Screaming See, out, study sheets. I was trying to tell this dude. Huh? Well, oh, I'm all confused. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but I'm going to tell you like this. Geologers is the best thing since water. Let me stop. Why, Why is geologers the best I'm just, thing? I'm just before? joking. That's the... Egypt, I didn't explain that to you? Nah. Well, there's a guy that I know, and um, they don't really listen to this, so... I, I don't think I'm a fin dude, but if I did, yo, shout out to my man. I'm sorry, but it was funny as hell. But at my at my nine to five, we have these things called the geo loggers, which is like a GPS device, pretty much. And we put that on the vehicles to like track it. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so they started talking about it in one of the one of our meetings. And this one dude, he was giddy as hell. I wish I, I could show you right now, like. Just bouncing off in his chair like he was so happy for the for for that topic, you know what I'm saying? So this girl, <laughs> this girl, she matter of fact, shout out to Shannon. She screamed out, not scream, not right there, but when we got the meeting, she was like, uh, "The dude is like um, the dude from the Fairly Odd Parents, Crocker. You you ever oh, watch the Fairly Odd Parents? I can't say that I do. Ah, uh, you can't go, you ain't gonna laugh then." Uh, you, you, ain't gonna the joke. you gotta watch uh, it. Just watch. Just look up right now on YouTube. Fairly Odd Parents. But this guy, every time he's like, uh, the the little boy has fairy, you know, fairies as his godparents or whatever, and they, you know, grant him wishes and stuff. So he go every time he talks about them, he like explodes and shit, or like his glasses will fall off and his eyes will pop out of his head, and he'll be like fairies. So this girl said, uh, she screamed out, geologers, and it was like, I knew they exist. So if you don't watch the show, you're not gonna laugh. But I'm pretty sure any of you guys that had um nothing to do, but if you if you you know smoking, drinking, you probably watched it. Or if you have little kids, I know I know for a fact. You know what I'm saying you guys are gonna know what I'm saying with Crocker. Egypt, look it up and you'll see what I'm saying. But when I show you how this dude was bouncing in his seat, you'd have been like, wow. But it was funny as hell, man. It was like the funniest thing. Um, so this dude was ecstatic about some geologers. Oh, uh, he was freak. I'm talking about like, cause we can do this and we can do that. Now I was like, whoa. So I laugh every time we sit in a meeting. <laughs> I start laughing. Um, but that was actually the second funniest thing in the in the last ten years, other than when Prophet ran into that fence. But we won't oh, get into that. Oh, you know, well, you know, he, he uh. He got he got excited over geologers, kind of like how you get excited over Yo. LeBron James. Oh, <laughs> shut up, Yo! First off, oh, I thought he was gonna make it because he been. All right, I'm not gonna tell, tell him the joke that you know what I'm saying. Probably has been clowning me lately and shit. Oh, right. no, 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 don't no, we're don't not gonna say get it. On that. Oh. Yeah, we're not gonna get on that. We're not gonna get on that. You know, but I mean, if you ever decide to play the lotto. No, okay, I'm about anyway. We're gonna go to a track now and we're gonna come back with a, a topic that uh, me and Prophet and Egypt was discussing. Uh, but we're gonna get back with y'all. Hey, hey, What am I saying? Hope you get it out the first night. Prove what you're saying. Ready, go, dolo. Did your homies for show? About to hit that VIP. Uh oh, what's the goal? That brother wanna tag Casey knows all over my body. By the essay with a Tom Port party. Head gone so strong. Flipping in that big it on ball out cheekers. Got me twisted. Two coliseums, two stupendous. Twerk that system. Bitly tinted. Enjoy lavish living. Show for driven. Celebrate everyday haters. We congratulate making big moves from Italy to Japan. And why Dakota? No, 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 no.
because of the fact I make my own paper. Uh -huh. Too focused to be thinking about a nigga. Yeah. Since a single life, the wallet got bigger. Uh -huh. And so the temptations, chocolate, yeah. carrot, yeah. vanilla is amazing. Yeah. Beans, Beamer, yeah. Jack, so crazy. Yeah. Traveling shoes, studio spree. Yeah. Boss with a lifestyle is Fugazi. Yeah. He wanna penetrate yeah. my man yeah. over here, right? Believe that. Only interested in you eating a yeah. cat. Yeah. 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 Come to 
fly, I'm the mayor. This is what my D sounds like as a banger. I'm lighting up trees, but there ain't a ranger. Danger, rip through like mystical. No, I'm not a stranger. My shirt's soft, but my Malcolm X snap hard. Walk around and my kicks louder than a frat yard. Swag is uncommon. Coats never seen before. Blue army jacket, too smooth like a bowling ball. Pool halls, never seen my type of pockets, y'all. I'm not a tool boy, more of a cool boy. The milk stay eyeing me. I feel like a pool boy. Pool charts can't even hunt on my food, boy. Getting chicken, New York, make you feel like a rude boy. Good girls can go bad as long as you're bad. Yep. I ain't looking if you ain't got that. Swag. Fresh like a diaper after you clean. Newborns ain't got shit on. Say hello to the fresh kid. Breaking necks, I should be arrested. No Khaled, I'ma show him who the best is. Me. Who the best is. Me. Who the best is. Me. Say hello to the fresh kid. Breaking necks, I should be arrested. Dirt. No Khaled, I'ma show him who the best is. Who the best is. Who the best is. Shut shit down, nigga. Fashion or style is always just an extension of you, really. So it's just how I be feeling. Like, you know, whether I feel like wearing a hoodie, sometimes I feel like wearing a suit. You know, sometimes that's how I'm feeling that clean, fresh. Um, I always like having unique pieces on, just like from jewelry to everything. You know what right. I'm saying?
what's going oh, on what the um for, uh where and um i don't know what i'm about to say and say what y'all want i'm i'm this, that's uh fuego over there trying to figure out what he's talking about and that's mike still trying to wow oh, oh wait 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 what <laughs> Mike Sudan, oh, well, Mike Sudan, I mean, uh, uh, the, the, the Mike Sudan. Yo, Ain't Mike nobody Sudan, commenting yo, on that yo, shit either. Yo, yo, it's Egypt until I tell y'all mofos it's Mike <laughs> Sudan. How about that? Huh? Huh? Oh, yeah. Why are we having, like, a vote for that shit? I thought I put it on there. Well, every all of y'all that look at my Facebook have been ignoring me, and I'm about to call y'all out because I'm getting mad. I asked a damn question up there, and don't nobody answer me before. The same four people that always answer me. Okay, well, I'm gonna start know. saying, how many of y'all uh, y'all dudes is, is? Oh, I can't say that. What I'm about to say, sorry. Um, we should just call Mike Sudan anyway. Yeah, we can. So just probably do that. get mad and shit. No, I was just probably just with Egypt because he might get mad or something. Oh, before I forget, Sudan, shout shout out to Knowledge, aka that dude, uh, my cousin. That had a picture on his timeline of Mayweather with no shirt on, and he liked it. So, what? In other words, oh. <laughs> so I called him a pretty mouth dude, and we were going back and forth all day. Oh. He didn't he didn't respond on Facebook to me, but shout out to uh, liking Mayweather in the nude. Let me stop. <laughs> I know he's gonna be mad when he hears that. AKA General Grime. Yes. yes. Grime. But, yo, real quick. Okay, I have a topic on my right now, ongoing topic that is probably going to last for the next eight weeks. But basically, I put on my Facebook, I put everybody wants to be black but doesn't want to be black. Right? So, so, what does that mean? What does that mean to you? What it means is that, prop no, let me stop. What it means to me is that, a lot of people want to basically become like be in the when I say black culture, I'm not talking about just hip hop. I mean, in general, they want to talk with the same slang. They want to, you know, get cornrows. They want to do similar things. Some of them want to get bigger lips. Some people want to get darker. Some people want to, you know, put grease in their hair, get finger waves, all that type of stuff. But when they see in their rear view mirror, the cops in the rear view. That's when they don't want to be black no more. So they want to go back to what they're supposed to be. My thing is that that's fine, whatever way you want to do it. But it's like if you want to, it's like that, not that they want to be, they say, I want to be black. But my point is you can see when a lot of people out there, they like, not, I wouldn't say faking the funk. It's not like they're faking the funk or nothing like that. I'm just saying that they want all the perks about what being black is. But they really don't want to be black. And I'll tell an example. I was talking to a girl that she's actually from um, Middle East area. And she does every, I mean, she likes black guys, all this. She sold me all this stuff. She's yo-yo this and what's good that. As soon as I said, so you got black in you? Oh, no. And I'm like, whoa, why so defensive? What do you mean? No, 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 like that. You might say, oh, well, whatever, but. Is it, I said, is it bad being black? Well, well, I, I, I'm not black, and I, I wouldn't want people to think I was black. I was like, what? Why not? And then yeah. basically, I know what she wanted to say. Maybe she got caught in a corner or something like that. But I was just thinking like, damn. So the perks about what you think black should be or whatever is cool. But if somebody actually thought you were black for like a day, you wouldn't like that at all. So yeah, I, I, I go ahead. Oh no, 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 saying, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. Y'all could jump in. No, nah, I was just saying, like, oh, when somebody you know said something about that, it's like, oh, you gotta, you guys, like you said, you gotta jump back to who you were before, like you know, talking proper, you know, stuff like that. And it's just like it kills me because it's like it looks like that you're trying to make it look like a recreational activity. Yeah, like you just come in your leisure time or something like that. And it's like, nah, that's a 24-7 gig. You know, you go out <laughs> here, you know, you might have people looking at you funny or, you know, this, that, and the other. But, you know, being black is a 24-7 gig. You just can't sit there and be like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk like this, wear my pants like that, do that, do this, whatever. And then, you know, like you said, when the cops are in the rear view, you go back to your original self again. 
And I'm like, why, why, why is it like that? You know what I'm saying? I mean... All, all I can say with that is that I'm not telling nobody people to stop wearing Jordans or wearing baggy pants or, or bandanas and all like that because that's actually a negative stereotype of black people and that shouldn't you know we shouldn't even do that like that. All I'm yeah. saying all I'm saying is that when when you're doing all of that, what you're not doing is you're not understanding fully like once I what am I trying to say? Like I, I once you know, told talk to a you know a white guy that you know he was really on on the urban type tip, and I always told him you can always go back and change your way. So in other words, yep. if he lived in an area that hated black people, he can always take off the gold out the gold teeth, pull up his pants, brush his hair, and speak with a proper English, and he's accepted. I can't do that. See what I'm saying? Whether I'm in a suit and tie or in baggy clothes, I'm, I am who I am. So like yep. Prophet is saying, it's not a a gig. You know what I mean? It's not like you could just, you know, part time or whatever. You actually have to know what, you know, what comes with this. And it's just, my thing is that, you know, I just feel like I made that comment because I just feel like a lot of people are hopped up on what the perks are about being you know, in into the culture. But they don't truly want the negativity that comes with it. You right. see what oh, I'm saying? This, you, said, you said it's a Middle Eastern chick? She was a Middle Eastern chick. Like, from, remember, I, I think I told you, like, Iran or one of those countries. I cannot remember exactly. And she's from, like, where is she she's from? from she's from? Say, no, 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 no. She's from there, but she likes black oh, she's people. From there, now, so no, she no, no. She's accent, like you. She's like you. Because she doesn't have okay. a, I didn't know. I, obviously, I know she was from somewhere, but I didn't know that she was from there. Like, I knew she was from somewhere, but she has no accent. She's like you, like I said. Like, you know, first okay. generation in the country type thing. Right. You know right. what I mean? So, she likes black dudes and all of that. And that's fine. You can like who you like. I'm not saying that. But what I'm trying to say is that it's a fine line of liking somebody and then actually going and trying to become that. You know what I'm saying? And it just made me think. Now, she didn't really do anything. She, you know, because if she's not, I mean, she knows her culture more than me. Maybe she just got a tan or whatever. And I, I can't say she made her hair nappy, but I'm just saying. You know what I mean? But, and I, I'm sorry to say nappy. I mean kinky because that might have offended people. Um, but yeah. I know I got naps. I, I don't care. <laughs> you know what I mean? But the, the thing about it is that I just felt like, you know, it just brought into my mind. She just reminded me of, you know what, that could be a topic of why, um, why do, you know, why do people, some people, you know, want to be down, but they don't really want to be down. They don't really, really want it, but they do. Like, as soon as you, in their mind, in your mind, think that they could be black, they will fight against it, but they love everything that comes with w the perks. Like I said, the perks. Well, I mean, you never know. Maybe, I mean, do you know this person? Oh, I don't know her personally. Not like that. Only through work. I don't I don't know her personally. Okay, I mean, yeah. for all we know, you know, she could have been, you know, brought up or she was raised around a lot of black people for all we know. And, you know, you raise around a certain type of environment. You're mm -hmm. going to, you know, you're going to get a product of your environment. But at the same time, she mm -hmm. knows, you know, she's not black. So when you asked her, are you black or do you have black in you? She, she said no. At the same time, if she really knew her culture, she would really know her culture, and she would say, "Well, I have African in me, and that consists of and all that." Well, what I'll other people from that country let's, in that let's, area let's, told me. Okay. Not okay, only let's that. Be real here. Not. Well, 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 go ahead. Yeah, I don't mean to cut you off, but let's be real here, okay? I mean, mm -hmm. when it comes to the Middle East. Middle Eastern culture, I know a little bit about it. And I know I'm going to piss a lot of people off. Anyone that's listening to this, you're probably going to get a, or, you know, get pissed off. But if, okay. this is the truth. This is the way I see it, okay? Whenever you have people of Middle Eastern descent or North African descent, okay, and their appearance is questionable, meaning you can't really tell, you know, eh, they could be, you know, maybe they do have a little bit of, you know, African blood or it's kind of questionable, they deny it to the death. Even if they know, oh yeah, or, or even if it's you know, you know, it, like I said, it's questionable. But you can kind of tell that there's some kind of, you know, heritage there. They're gonna deny it because they want to distance themselves from anything African related. Exactly. That's the way it is. I mean, it's it's messed up, 
and people can deny it, but I see it on a regular basis because I've been around Middle East. Even people that it's not even questionable, like you can tell that they have black in them, they'll deny it like there's no tomorrow because, you know, they just want to distance themselves from that as much as they can. For what reason? You know, for various reasons. Exactly. Exactly. My 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 thing about it is that I I understand you know with with that it just like I said I'm not really jumping on her more so than she just clicked something in my brain that said you know what wow that just reminded me you know how stuff reminds you of something even sometimes it it's not the it's not that person but she just made me think of oh damn there is people out there that I have met and that I'm sure a lot of you have met that truly love not truly love, but truly try to take a part, like, I don't want to say a piece of the culture, but they try to do all the great, all the good things in, in the culture. Like, for instance, when a lot, a lot of black, a lot of black men that I know, like Hispanic women, white women, okay? So they will get in love with everything that's the positive of that. Spanish women are feisty. Spanish women have long curly hair. But they don't really understand that a lot of Spanish women have a bad ass temper. They don't realize they they're not they're not really feeling that part. They're feeling all the good stuff that makes it sexy or that makes it like that. So that's what I was getting to when I'm saying that a lot of people want to be black, but they don't want to be black at the same time. Like you really don't want this. That's what I'm trying to get at. I'm not saying I don't want to be black, but what I'm saying is that understand that when you are if you was black for one day i'm not sure if most people would ever sag again you know what i'm saying i don't know if they'll ever wear fronts in their mouth or tats on their neck is the experience that bad if they, i mean if it just for one day i i really i see it being totally different than they really expect now that puts me into a situation right now, uh, actually topic that I we're not getting to on this show, but we are going to discuss because I was discussing with a co- co-worker about how about black females, about how she feels that a lot of black men do not go after black females. And it's very hard for a black female in this society that we live in. So what, what I'm saying is as in a white woman that's doing what I said, like, you know, Wearing the, you know, wearing the finger waves and the tracks and doing stuff, you know, they talking like they, they actually know the culture like that. They actually become a black woman that day. They will be surprised. And and I'm being real. Me, I, I didn't care what you were as long as you was cool and you look good. It didn't matter. But a lot of, a lot of black men and men in general may not mess with them. I see her point of view in that because I see it myself. I actually see black men not, and you're like, what the fuck? This girl look good, what? But they go into the next race. Now, me, I'm a product of an interracial marriage. You know what I'm saying? When I say that, I'm talking about my wife. You know, my wife's Mexican. My kids are half. You know what I mean? So, it's one of those situations that I I fit, but I can see what they're saying. I don't have no, I love interracial. I mean, that's how you populate the world. That's why we're so beautiful in this world, because everybody's mixed. That's the way I feel about it. You know what I'm saying? I love it. But at the same time, I'm looking at her point of view, and that w- that's kind of what we were talking about all of this the other day also. We were all like in a little, you know, a little huddle. You know, you little talking about everything, and she was like, well, as a black woman, this, that, and the other. So put that same uh, Middle Eastern girl into the African-American woman's seat for one day. Would you either understand or would you not want to be like, damn, I'm so glad that I'm this and not that? You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I'm pretty sure, I don't know, uh, 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 Egypt, if you went through it, but during 9-11, there was a lot of people, I wasn't one of them, but there was a lot of people I heard that said, damn, I'm so glad I'm not from the Middle East. You know what I mean? Well, to not get treated like that. You know, you I, see I what I'm saying? So, right, right, right. I get what you're saying, but yeah, I don't remember any particular incident where, you know, I felt discriminated against or... You know, people hating on me because because of my background. But you know what? Let, let me stop you. And that and I'm not what? telling your name, but you remember your first and your last name is not Islam. If it was, you might have seen that. Yeah, but but people, 
I mean, number one, when you see me, you probably... A lot and they of don't know, I'm exactly. Yep. People think I'm Hispanic, so that's one thing. Shit. And my last name Ooh. is, like you said, it doesn't sound Middle Eastern. My first or last name doesn't sound Middle Eastern. Exactly. But I will say this much, though. I was at an airport in South Carolina one time. Yeah. Flying back down from, from New York. And, um, you know, my passport, it tells, of course, it has your, you know, where you were born. Yeah, your origin, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going through security or whatever. And the dude, he was like, yo, we got a one-up. I'm like, okay, I don't know what a one-up is, but all right, <laughs> what, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Who's winning? Right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. What? So... So whatever, man, like, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, there's going to be like some dude behind me that's also a one-up or maybe two guys behind me that he's a one-up. But no, everyone's going through with no problem, no one-ups except for me. So I asked the guy, I said, what's a one-up? He said, oh, well, you know, we have random uh, searches and, you know, just every once in a while, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, really, every once in a while as soon as, as, soon as you saw my passport, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, take your shoes off, take your socks off. You know, blah, 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 go through the metal detector, why this, why that. You know, in the end, I got through, you know, but still, why was I at one up? You was profiled, pretty much. Yeah, but I mean, he didn't, yeah, he saw the passport and whatever, you know. And that, and that's and that's one thing I tell, like I tell, you know, my wife and everything, you know. I mean, I could say Yvonne on the, on the she don't care. But <laughs> Yvonne, I tell Yvonne that all the time. I tell her. You're you're different than like say her sister and brother. They you know they're Hispanic when you look at them. You know to me she looks like that too. But a lot of people do think she oh she could be Italian or she's white whatever they look at that. So unless they hear her name, that's when they say oh, because I had a, a situation and you remember little man right from my apartment. Yeah. yeah. He was talking so dirty about Mexicans and me and Yvonne are like uh. I, and when she went in, I said, hey, you know, she's Mexican, right? I didn't know that. I thought she was white. You know what I mean? So off of, at least off of a look, obviously, they don't know what you are or whatever. But you would probably feel it because you you look like you could be Hispanic. Or if somebody says, oh, I'm from the Middle East, you'll be like, oh, okay. Or if you said you're from Greek, I mean, Greece, oh, okay. You know what I mean? They they would understand. So you don't look like you couldn't pass for a, just a regular, you know, Caucasian male. You can, you can, you know, people, you don't look like that at all. So what, what, what I was just, just saying is that when you're, um, you know, when, when you, and, and like I said, with the female thing, it made me think of that when, the, when we were all talking, you know, and then the girls made her comment, then the, you know, African American girl made her comment, you know, she was like, you know, but you guys don't understand yada, yada, you know, and we won't, like I said, we won't get into that topic until another show. Cause I do want to have like a small panel on here. Uh, to see what everybody has to say, but you know, it, it's just it just made me think that you know, truth truth be told, a lot of people that are you know, even if they're not trying to, I'm not saying they want to be. I'm talking about even people that were born and raised, like Paul Wall, for instance, born and raised around black people in the projects, whatever. He still doesn't have the same thing that. A black person would have, even though he he thinks that he does, but he really doesn't. Well, no, I mean, why not? I mean, because he's not black, like you said. He could take the fronts off, wear a suit, and he'll be fine. But but they don't. I don't think a lot of people truly understand that. You know what I'm saying? Because if you haven't been through it yet, you don't understand it. And it's just like I've met, I've met, um, you know, black people or Hispanic people that only grew up in white neighborhoods. That truly don't understand, and I have never, like I said, I've never been profiled like you were just then. The only time I got profiled was that time in Seven Eleven. Me and you, the dude was like, "Let me check your pockets." Remember that time? Yeah, yeah. That's the only time that's ever happened to me in twenty nine years. And you know, knock on wood, hopefully, you know that don't happen. But I'm just saying that it is one of those things that I'm not speaking of a personal, but I know other people that's been through that, and. All I'm saying is that, like, until you get that, when you grow up in that, you don't really understand. Like, if you grow, if you're a white guy that grows up in a black neighborhood like that, they treat you as they're your people. You're their people and everything like that. They they embrace you. When you get out of there, is when you understand. When you get into the real real, real world, <laughs> real world, you'll start to understand that. But I just feel like a lot of people don't really understand that it is a significant difference. I'm not saying you should 
not, you know, work hard because, oh, I'm black. I'm never going to make it. No bullshit because so is Obama. When you look at him, you don't see that his mother, even though he got raised around his moms and them, you don't see that. You see a black man. He made it to the ultimate level of the government in the U.S. He's made it. So it is that that's a crock of shit when you say, oh, because I'm this and that. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm just saying is that I think that a lot of people that truly are are into the, I guess, trying to be into the um, into the black culture. If they had to be black for a day, I'm not sure if half of them would come back to that. It's just like if, you know, being fat for a day. When you clown fat people all the time and you have to wear a fat suit, you start to know what they go through as a fat person. So you you now change your whole outlook. Not saying everybody you does. Huh? You remember that one um <clears throat> that one uh, Dave Chappelle show uh, episode from back in the day that had uh what's his name on there? The dude that was always pissed off. Yo, I think his name was uh, Paul something Paul Paul Mooney. Oh Paul yeah. Mooney. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, was that one skit yeah <laughs> where he was like everybody wants to be a you know what, but don't nobody want to be a you know what? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't even know that. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do you say? To everybody wants to be is that. You can, you can go that. ahead and say it if you want. Let me stop. Oh, I can't. I can't say the, the, the No, uh, I'm just kidding with y'all. Go ahead though. No, he said you know, in so many words, he was like, you. Everybody wants to be a nigga, but they don't want to be a nigga. So he said it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, nah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, exactly. That's one of those thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. And and I just, you know, I mean, I want to know what everybody has to say about it. I mean, this is not telling you if you're, you know, white, black, Asian, whatever, and you like hip hop. I'm not telling you stop doing hip hop because hip hop has nothing to do with a race. You know what I'm saying? Not at all. You know, so that that's music. You know what I mean? So don't don't think I'm telling you that. I'm not telling you how to dress. If you're, you know, if you're black and you wear your pants down, uh, do what you want. I really don't care what you do, um, you know, but I'm just saying as far as that goes, I think you, if you want a, a good job, you need to hike it up a little bit regardless of what race you are. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But, 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 but the point. Of what race you are, you can't go up there, you know, yeah. talking slang and, you know, with your pants hanging you got to show a professional demeanor regardless, like you said, regardless and, of what race you are. And before we go, because we do got it, we're going to get to um, this interview with uh, Jason Maravich. But before that, I want to say also, not just slang as in, yo, what's good, son? What you, what you, um, you know, what you really talking about? What's, what's really good in the hood and all that? I'm talking about if you was talking on the interview, it was like, dude, I like doing this, dude, dude, dude. That's slang also that you shouldn't use at an interview exactly. professionally. Yeah. So that's all of it. I'm not just talking about that because... And, and like I said, in, in, in general, I mean, you just be who you are. You know what I mean? That's how I feel about it. Whatever whatever it is, it is. But um, maybe I want... that girl was being who she is. Maybe that Middle Eastern girl was being who she is. Exactly. Maybe she doesn't have any black. And so when you asked her, are you, you know, do you have any black in you? She, she said, no, I don't. No, no, no. That's why I said that. She didn't, I wasn't really directing this to her. I was more like, it, it made me think about something like that. You know what I'm saying? And, and when I say... I'm not trying. I'm not gonna get on this subject of, of course, DNA. But when you see, when I see somebody with hair a little bit less coarse than my hair, but they still don't have straight hair, you have some African in your blood. I mean, it's yeah, common fucking I sense. Know. That's what I'm. That's why. That's that's what I was trying to make the point. I was trying to make yeah. earlier is that you know she's she was probably lighter skin, right? Yeah, yeah. Like uh. Okay. Not not as light so, not as light as you uh, a tiny, like your pops. Okay, so a little bit darker than me then. Yeah, yeah, not too much. Okay, but, so, yeah. so it's questionable though. So you don't see her and she's like, oh, well, that's definitely a black chick, right? Exactly. Like that, right? Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. When it's like that, this is this is from my experience. And when it's like that, then they'll swear up and down, left and right, that they have no African blood in them whatsoever. <laughs> but, but they have all kinds of European blood. You know, oh yeah, my great grandfather was Greek and, so you know, this, you know, and French and blah, blah, blah. But mm. if you say, but they will deny the African side to the death. And you know what? And that's just that goes for a lot of people. That goes for a whole. And you're right. You're right, one hundred percent. And we won't, like I said, I won't dwell on that. But yeah, I feel you on that. Um, but yo, we gonna definitely go to some tracks. I uh, gotta play some tracks by T. Wells, Josiah, uh, Guap. 
You know what I'm saying? The whole crew got to play a couple of tracks right here, and um, we'll be back with uh, the Jason Maravich um, interview. The block. Thank you for the music. I use it like cooling. Put it on the top, then I hit it right through it. Told my lady I'll be back, then I just gassed it. Whipped it, hit a buck 50 through traffic. Can't stop it. This sh turns drastic. Welcome to my park, homeboy. I'm a bastard. Flow well mastered. The rhythm well crafted. The words is the future and never on the past tense. Put the nail on the coffin, I done this outfit These rappers are little, I'm Texas to these outfits Yep, I'm going in, no condom, no problem I got an eye father, bite him like a rock waller I'm about a dollar for that change, Mr. Obama Such a lethal weapon, old Simon is my co-signer Too young to be an old-timer But I'm kicking out of these boys, I'm a great teacher Set it out, set it out Welcome to my house party, you could call me J-House I'm a star baby, can't you see how the man glow? Cash rules everything around me, dinero Smoother than dinero, nothing but a free throw Fly than the ego, excuse my ego Como estas amigo, I do it for the people I do it for the family, get bread like seagulls Ready, set, here we go Set for the master plan, that master plan To show God I'm his biggest fan Going for the angels, even though I'm a Yankees fan Catch me in the lab while I'm cooking on that Peter Pan Ha, and wavy baby, can't you see I'm going crazy About to set it off with the ladies What up, Cleo Frankie, for block, you know what it is I'm a block boy, never sold a drug in my life But I supply, boy Set it out, set it out, set it out I'll show you how to do this, son Set it out, set it out Late night, cuddle up, I'm gripping the thighs Air 
that time she looking, she get me hypnotized. They dreaming about marriage, I'm feeling her eyes. It's like I'm in a race, and shawty deprived. Niggas try to holler, but she not feeling them guys. Too many fakes, so we had to cut some people off. Head to the Marriott so I can set that thing off. Ain't no need for interruptions, seduction. She love the way a player does. You can get the love. Got a nigga head gone, but I ain't crazy. But lately, been thinking you should be my main lady. Ride all night, have your back bottom morning. Got a couple drinks, we can keep going. You're my main lady, down for whatever. Got you going crazy, but shorty is whatever. Shawty chill bumps Wanna hop up in the view so we can chill, huh? Take a trip or two Roll a couple L's up just to trip with you Hit the mall, we can ball like we teammates Drop a bang roll on the counter with a big face Let the world know you down the ride with a big dog Bam on a hater if they jumpin' like crisscross To be real, I'm in love with your lip Stupid swag in the club, me and you floss Your homegirl causing problems till I get lost Your ex stuntin' like he hard, but he too soft Better let him know that your mind's not yeah. You had a dark past, but you bout to shine now yeah. See, we made it out the gutter, so just smile, babe I'm still grinding, so we good for a while, babe I ain't lying We can ride all night, have your back by the morning a couple drinks, we can keep going. Be my main lady, down for whatever. Got me going crazy, but shawty is whatever. I done fought myself a master plan On Y85, we ride hand to hand Family reunions, introduce me as your man You a king, like you from the lost and found Try to keep it on the low, but it got around Cause you got me bragging, I can't hold it I'm feeling you like massages and bae, I can't control it We can ride all night, have you back by the morning Got a couple drinks, we can keep Oh, man, I do this for my 
my city, for my city, I put on All that funny shit is dead, set it out, then it's on Why, why you tryna play games, man? I ain't no dummy Cause a nigga better have my money Cause nigga, I don't think you want no problem with that ch 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 If I got a eye, see you on the mama Cause I ain't never had no nigga try to take them from me Cause a nigga better have my money Cause a nigga, I don't think you want no problem with that ch 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 If I got a eye, see you on the mama Man, these niggas where they ride is yeah, right, I can't tell All they talking in the rent, they must be talking to themselves How you come across them hoes and you the one that's getting pimped These niggas talking out they asses, why they always talking shit Throw your rope, play your position, for you wind up in the dick You don't really want no problems, you just bother cause I'm rich But you don't like the fact I'm everything you can be Ain't nothing changed, but the money, it would never change me I'm a G, squad up, get the teams on deck Wave runners is the game, and I ride for my set Q and D, you would think I was floating the way I with the beat Mind your business if you wanna know, just know I'm doing me Cause I'm hot, them dudes are so, so, they ain't tricking no Yo, I'm blowing on that sticky cup, full of coca low, so Plus I pop the bean and I wash it down with lean Keep it cool before I really make the sick, nah, man Why, why you tryna play games, man, I ain't no dummy Cause a nigga better have my money Cause nigga, I don't think you want no problem with that ch 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 If I got a eye, see you on the mama Cause I ain't never had no nigga try to take them from me Cause a nigga better have my money Cause a nigga, I don't think you want no problem with that ch 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 If I got a eye, see you on the mama Tomorrow Yo, what's going on, everybody? Um, my volume is very loud, so you gotta excuse the big mouth. But uh, me and Prophet, this Fuego Beats Radio, of course, and uh, Prophet and Fuego on right now with uh, Pistol Pete's oldest son, uh, Jason Maravich. What's good, Jason? What's going on, fellas? Chilling, chilling Chillin', like man. always, man. Um, first, I gotta give a shout out to Jason because. A lot of people, you know, don't answer me, and I usually want to choke them when they don't. So I can't, let me stop. But, dude, like, right away, I hit him up, you know what I'm saying? Because I was watching a documentary on his father, like, two in the morning. And I just said, damn, I wonder what dude is, you know, what's up with his, his son. So I hit Jason up on Facebook, and he hit me back, like, four hours later, and was like, yo. So, one, he showed me that he's mad humble. And he's not, you know, he don't have no big head or, you know, think he's too big or, or none to just, you know, do a small interview and talk to us. Like, he's real good people. So, I, I yeah, I appreciate that. Like, definitely, man. Like, yo, it's definitely an honor to, you know, speak with you and everything. No, I, I'm, I'm enjoying being on your show. Definitely, man. So, first, you know, let, let us know, like, because a lot of people, um, didn't realize that you was, you know, balling like you was balling. So what, what college is, I know you, you, you went to Alabama, but is it, didn't you transfer? Uh, well, 
with that now? Did I transfer from Alabama? Yeah, or did you you stayed all there all four or all, all your years? Yeah, I, I went to Alabama, um, and I had a a, a four leg on my back, and we were doing preseason like conditioning doing squats. Okay. So I basically had to take a medical red shirt, and then um, after that, I ended up transferring to um, Gulf Coast Junior College in Mississippi, and uh, was at least second leading school in the nation over there, like twenty nine a game. And um, oh. and then from there, I had a, a bunch of offers, uh, but I want I had offers from Kentucky. I wanted to stay close to home though. Uh, to my office in this place, so uh, yeah. we ended up going to McNeese State and leaning in my back again, and then uh, I was thinking about quitting because I was just fed up with the back injury, so uh, I came home and was just going to school, and then uh, I had a friend call me from uh, Mississippi from uh, NAI school, uh, William Carey in Hattiesburg, and told me uh, that I should still be playing whatever, so I ended up finishing up at NAI because I had two years of eligibility there, where it was Division One, I only had one year left, so... Uh, Went up there, did a little good at two time first team All American and then um okay. and then got invited to that top to be senior camp enforcement. That's the stop. Can can you do me a favor? Um, can you talk like like a little bit can you talk a little bit louder? Because for some reason I don't know why this like something happened with the with the phone. I'm not sure if it's if it's okay. on your end or my end. Okay. Uh, you straight? No oh, okay, okay, cool. But that that's I heard um the just of everything. So that that's good right there. So I mean, you played at Alabama. You um, I know you said you had them injuries, and I I did see that when I was reading and everything. So, um, I mean, I guess I could go all the way back. Like, what what got you into, you know, basketball like that? Like like as into I'm not I'm pretty sure right. your you know your father your mother, kind of put you right. into it well, like all of us. But like, what got you to really you know focus on it like that? Um, when I was little, I think, I think it was three or four, uh, my dad did the same thing my, his dad did with him was he got me a little, little, I think it was a little nerf ball or something and, uh, threw me the ball when I was little and he said I, he said I shot it and missed and, uh, got all mad and got, and I got hooked on it. I wanted to keep shooting until I made it. That's how it started or whatever. And then, um, what happened was, uh, when we got about five or six and was old enough to do some drills, he would, uh, we had upstairs, we had a, uh, a, a Basically, a little gym in our house. We had uh, on the second floor. We had a uh, a goal for me, like an eight foot goal, and one for my younger brother. Like, uh, and they were both welded into a wooden beam. Okay. And uh, he would take us, he would take us up there about two hours a day and, and teach us drills and uh, perform on our shot and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I actually he put me in one of his uh, homework basketball DVDs. It's in the dribbling one where I'm doing the figure eight dribble when I was like, I think I was either five or six years old. Oh, okay. Cause I was wa- yeah, actually probably. watching that. I wish I could have utilized those, those videos. But you know, we didn't have YouTube and all that, like in '99 and all. That. Right. <laughs> right. Because I'm, I'm blown. I was like, wow. Because I was sitting there watching all that, and I'm like, damn, he actually had like instructive videos, you know, um, pistol, and it was like, wow, yeah. like that, w- that would, shit, that would have helped out a lot. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Damn. And I actually used to, you know, we used to play ball with Profit. Like we went to the same high school and everything. So. Okay. You know, we go back too, but I mean, probably you could jump in whenever. Yeah, yeah, he was kind of, he was kind of slow and kind of, you know. He talked. <laughs> he, 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 he was good. Yeah, I mean, he was good, good, a good center because you know everybody. Yeah, he was like the tallest at the time. So he, he's a ha- he's a hater. Profit's a hater. You can tell that's that's a product a person that got dunked on before. So you know how that goes. Let me stop. <laughs> what I wanted to ask you was, uh, so was your dad like a uh, maybe like a harsh? No, no, not at all. Uh, no, not, actually, my grandpa, my dad's dad, was the real strict disciplinarian type. Like, uh, my dad was real, real easy with us. Like, he never forced it on us. Like, we, he said if we wanted to play, he would teach us as much as we wanted to know. If we didn't, he'd be cool with that too. But we were both, I guess, just being in our blood. We uh, we both wanted to play at an early age, so he he uh he helped us with a lot. But he was never like uh. Never one of those, like, you know, driving us every day or trying to, like a lot of parents do with kids, try to force them to play, you know, even if they don't want to. Right. That kind of deal. It wasn't nothing like that. We just, we, we, it was in our blood, man. So we, we just wanted as much help as we could get from him. And, and, but even when we were little, we never realized, you know, he was just bad to us. We didn't, we didn't realize until later, you know, Pistol Pete and all he accomplished. But, uh, he was, um, we, we always looked forward to that, you know, the time of day, man, when we go up there and do drills and shoot around and stuff like that. 
Huh? No, when you, I know it, I know everybody else. You know, everybody as a kid had like a you know a favorite sport, and then they had that right. second favorite sport. So, what, what right. was your second sport? Man, I have been basketball since birth. Man, I, I've never, I've never even. I played soccer when I was eight years old. I think for one year just to try it out. That's the only thing I've ever, ever played, man. I'm just straight basketball, man. I like, yeah. I like watching. I like, I like watching football. I never, I never played it, but I like watching it. But as far as playing basketball, is man, the only thing. It's, it's been my first love since I was little. So, yeah. football. I can't wait. Can't wait. I know you can't wait. <laughs> Upcoming <laughs> season, right? You got a favorite team by any chance? Uh, for all the colors, like, uh, for all these, I'm up. Yeah, for pro. Um, I, I don't really, uh, I don't really have a favorite team, man. I don't really, really, really I just like, I don't really have like a favorite. Well, you you can I always be a Giants fan I, after tonight. So you know you could always come on the, on the G Men. Football, I'm a Bills fan, man. I've been suffering forever, but uh, uh like. Uh, NBA wise, man, I like teams that run and gun. So I guess I, I used to like to watch the Suns uh, when they used to do the run and gun. And uh, I like I actually like watching the Denver Nuggets this past year because they ran score a lot of points. But yeah, 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 they have, yeah, they got a pretty good bench, pretty deep. Yeah, pretty yeah. they got. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna be crazy in that Western Conference. I mean, the East is gonna be crazy, but the West, I think they're gonna be. Yeah, yeah I think I'm always like watching the West. They just kind of more slow down, beat you up, kind of where the West is kind of more open, you know, running gun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Definitely. Would you say the West is kind of on the, on the decline, though, because it seems like everybody's shifting over to the Eastern Conference? Yeah, yeah, the East is, the last couple of years, the East has definitely gotten a lot stronger, man. It, they used to be the West dominated, but the East is definitely uh, stuck, man. And that's only yeah, because everybody from the West came over. For real. <laughs> for real. <laughs> Is, is, yeah, you can look at it like that too. Yeah, I, um, uh, uh, this year is going to be real interesting, man. With all these, I can't keep track of who's going where, well, man. There's so many people with different teams now. Ridiculous, ridiculous. But yo, well, we're going to go to a track right now, and we're going to come back with uh, Jason Maravich. Oh, 
Everybody listening to Fuego Beast Radio and uh, Fuego and Prophet right here, and we're on the line with Jason Maravich talking about everything. Um, yo, it's it's good conversation though. I'm liking this, man. Oh, right? definitely for sure. So a question I had because I know you you mentioned to me that you played in a summer league with, um with the Mavericks, right? Back in like what 04 yeah, or well, something? Uh, 04, yeah. Yeah. How was that? Oh man, it was great. Um, especially because that year was uh, they had a loaded squad. That was with uh, they Derek Michael Finley. They had um, Nash and Van Exel at point. So, I mean, it was it was it was great as far as playing with a bunch of great players. But uh, it was kind of like one of those things like wrong, being the wrong time at the wrong you know being the wrong place, wrong time mm-hmm. because uh, you know trying to compete for a point guard spot with Van Exel and Nash. That's kind of uh, yeah, that's tough. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Because uh, they were both pretty much, at least Nash was in his prime, and Van Exel could still give you 20 off the bench in about 10 minutes. So, uh, it was it was a great experience, though, man. Uh, those guys are really cool, great players, man. And it was uh, it was definitely a great experience, man. But I, I it was, I got really uh, a little bit of a depression, man, after I got cut, just because uh, I'm so hard on myself and I wanted to make it and all. But um, you know. It's just part of it. They wanted to send me to Lithuania for a year, and I didn't. I didn't take it. Um, in retrospect, I should have taken it, but um, you know. No, but we we had that discussion too. I talked to my um uh, one of my coworkers um that I should have I should have had on this too, but he used to play up um in Baltimore. He actually played with uh Francis when they were at the junior college up there. Okay. So he um he was like you know he he's a, he graduated high school in like '96, so he's about that same era. That uh that you was in it. and we me when I when me and Prophet were about to graduate that's when like the D League came up and everything but in our mindset was like if you're not good enough for the NBA after college you got to find a job like <laughs> he wasn't thinking about yeah. oh I could I could make it and make shit I could make bank in Spain or you know like you said Lithuania I I mean but nowadays it's like wow I mean I'm trying to tell my I mean my kids are real young but you know I'm I'm gonna tell them when they grow up man you got options. So don't you know well, exactly, what I'm man? It, it, it's hard too, man, because it, it, even if you're really good, man, it's still uh, you still got to be kind of in the right place. You got to be in the right system, like to fit your stuff. There's a lot of stuff. Unless you're just an absolute freak like LeBron or something, it, it, it's it's not you know it's not guaranteed yeah. that even you know. I mean, we seen this year what Lynn did. He got. I mean, he he's yeah. with the team who cut him. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, it's yeah. one of those things that you know sometimes you get you get that luck. I mean, you get. To be a freak, like I said, you get to be a, a Kobe or a LeBron or a Melo or something like that. And then sometimes mm-hmm. you just got to work hard as hell and, and, like you said, fit in in the right that's spot. A great point with, uh, that's a great point with Lynn. Because he, I think he got cut by two teams or something. And, yeah, uh, he got he was on Golden State. I remember That's the last team right. I, I remember him on. Because I know he was with the Rockets, yeah. got cut. Then Golden State cut him. And I think that's when the Knicks picked him up. And then he got the yeah. chance. You know what I mean, and and now he's like, you know, I want my fifteen in three years, which we won't get on that. Yeah. I I didn't agree with that much. That that was a, that's a bit much <laughs> to me. Yeah, but. yeah. I mean, they, I guess you know a lot of it, like I'm sure they don't pay him too because they know he's gonna sell tickets too. So they, I that's, guess they. That's the main th- reason why I was like, okay, I can understand if the Knicks did right, keep right, him, right. him. It was because yo, he's the one who fills your seats. Because I mean, being from New York, I know how we do with players, like. Uh, we love, I mean, right. you love Melo. Oh, my God. Then all of a sudden, they wanted to trade Melo and Omari and told him I'll keep Lynn. Mm-hmm. What? I was like, what? But they'll turn on you. I New know, York man. will turn on you quick. That's I a know, message man. for you, I Tebow. <laughs> That's the one thing I like about New York fans, man. They're just brutally honest. They, there's no, like, yeah. uh, there's no black and white with them. And they, they yeah. you know, it's... That's why I think Tebow, man, and he's he better make sure he's on uh, a lot better game than he was last year. He's gonna get blasted. Oh, no doubt. The, uh, Reggie Miller still can't walk down the blocks in Manhattan at all, and it's, it's a damn shame. <laughs> it's like whoa, but uh, but yeah, do you 
Go ahead. Go ahead, Frost. Oh, no, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you. Uh, so now, you know, with the whole Jeremy Lin thing and how you know that that went about, do you think that the, you know, the scouters and everything like that need to pay more attention or pay attention to details as far as like when they're searching for talent? Uh, that's a good question, man. I think so because I, I, I mean, the Lin thing is kind of it's a unique story, man. Because I know that there's not a lot of guys that are gonna be. Uh, it put in that position and come out like he did, but uh, I, I definitely think they should pay more attention because uh, for a guy to get cut once or twice and to come out and just all of a sudden set the NBA on fire the way he did that 10 or 11 games, but I think there's a lot of guys that can really, really play that just don't get the opportunity, but uh, I got I watched a lot of the summer league, this, this stuff, and uh, uh, guys like Josh Shelby, who's been playing behind O.J. Mayo, he was shooting like Seventy percent from three point range in the summer league and having like twenty six points and uh, yeah. oh wow they had, a lot of, they had a lot of guys that like you know you re- never even seen playing the league but they can really play so they just never get the opportunity so yeah, I think scouting is definitely they need to step step the game up on the scouting because uh, I think there's definitely I don't know if there's anybody that could come out of nowhere like Lynn did but uh, I think it's a possibility you know? yeah but because of that everybody's gonna now focus a tiny bit more on <laughs> On on everybody like that because I mean that it, it's just crazy like that was that was crazy I mean I looked at his play and I'm like okay you know he can become something great and I and I felt I, I kind of wish that he could have played like you know at least got taught by a kid or or, or Nash or something because he wasn't gonna he's not gonna be a dominant like he ain't gonna be a Rondo you know what I'm not saying right, exactly exactly but he could have been you know I, I don't believe he's in the top five point guards like people were saying. Ain't no way he's better than Chris Paul, Rondo, Derrick right. Rose, and all of them. Westbrook, ain't, ain't no way. That's right. four right there. You talking about, you know what I mean? You're leaving out Nash. I, think, uh, <laughs> I agree. I think he can be in I agree. I think he can be in that second tier if he can yeah. reach his potential. Exactly. Um, I, I know. He, I think he'd be an all-star one day. I, I do think so. I, I, I think, think he got a whole how old is he? You know, I think he's, I mean, he's twenty-four. Young, huh? I think he's twenty-four, twenty-three, yeah. twenty-four. I, I yeah. thought he, I, I thought he might have been like twenty-two, twenty-three, maybe. The, he's between oh, twenty-two yeah. and twenty-four because I know he did all four years, and then he was in the league right, for yeah. two years too. Right. So. Yeah, I think, I think he was yeah, maybe mid, uh, mid twenties. Huh? I mean, he's definitely got a lot. Of time. I mean, he's just. I mean, he's barely played, so I mean, I'm sure he's he's got a lot. We've got a lot of us that hadn't reached his potential yet, but um, yeah. I think his story, his story is real good because I think now all these scouts now are going to be looking for the next call, next so called Lynn now. So exactly. So, you know. do you, so do you think that he's worth the twenty five million? I mean, if you were a GM, would you want to? Man, pay? Uh, I, I, I'm with you on. I, I say no, man. I, yeah. I think there's a lot. Of, uh, there's a lot of guys, man. I think it just. I don't. I don't know what goes into the reason with the paying them. I, I mean, if it's just based off pure skill, and I, no, I don't think so. Uh, but I mean, when you look at marketing tickets, because Yao Ming played there, I mean, they got a big. I heard they got a huge Asian market down there, so I'm sure. Right. With with, with uh, Son and Lin and Yao have been there. I'm sure that's going to be a big uh, plus for you know the yeah. season tickets and all that. But yeah, I mean, because there's look- very yeah yeah there's you very do- few guys in the league that deserve like. Big big money. Oh, there's a lot of overpaid guys for that one. Oh, like like back in um, you know, because every everybody now I know profit's gonna make. I'm not gonna go and talk about LeBron, but I'm a LeBron fan. Whatever, let's leave it alone. But on the Cavaliers, <laughs> Anderson Varejao made like 12 million. Like, why is he making that much? I was like, what the? F- why are you making that yeah, much I, money, yo? You, I mean, how much was he making? He was making between 10 and 12 million, like back then. Back, okay. I think it was 10. Thank you. Uh, if it's ten, I think you should have gave nine of it to LeBron. <laughs> yeah, yo, because no, to like, me, it's like these guys, man, like uh, like Steve Nash and all these guys that make all these other guys better, and then when when they leave the team and go somewhere else, you never hear from them again, you know. And that's and that's what I was saying about like the whole. There's no way that one person. I'm being honest right now. If the bet, I mean, think about Carmelo Anthony right now leaving. He's the best player mm-hmm. on the Knicks right now. Would they go to the bottom, the literal bottom of the league, just off of one or two or three, you know, no name cats? It was like they had their core team still. And for that, yo, you should be smacked in your face for paying Anderson Vergeau or anybody like that. Almost, almost. I mean, I'm talking about you. And then not only that, Rashad Lewis, 
was making 21. He was ma- the second highest player in the league and ain't play. I don't even think he played since like 10. <laughs> like for real. Like how you? Yeah, that was that was crazy, man. He signed a huge contract. Yeah. And Orlando. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish. No, I was just saying, like, who does he even play for right now? Because uh, I mean, I heard of Rashard Lewis. Well, he's on Miami now, but at oh, one wow. million. See, yeah, he signed him to, uh, they signed him to like the vets minimum, I think, for for the Heat. Um, yeah, and, and that's what he does. He actually deserves the vets minimum, like two years ago. He. <laughs> First of all, I told you Lewis. now I'm I have no team right now. I'm I want Melo to get one. I don't know. Now I want Melo to get one. I wanted LeBron to get one, but now I want Melo to get one. I do. Well, in order to get one, got an interesting team, man. They got a lot of talent, but there, there's still something missing, man. They, I don't know where it is. Well, one is missing. They need to stop drinking. That's one. <laughs> that's one thing they need to stop doing. Don't drink no more. Don't let them have no liquor at all. <laughs> they need to stop what? Drinking. You see what happened to kid? Oh, yeah, you know yeah. I, mean? I heard yeah. about that. I, I, that's a bad first impression, man, on your team. Dude, dude, dude didn't even, he wasn't even in there 48 hours. I mean, it yeah. seems like he yeah. just packed, he had his stuff packed already. Went over there, had boxes in the car and stuff, and then went to the bar. <laughs> like, are you kidding yeah. me? You, that quickly, I was like, damn, you haven't even tasted. And then... You know, I mean, but that's New York will do that to certain people. Like, I was really like, damn, you you signed JR? Because I was like, ah, he's a good player, but you're in New York now. Ah, he's back in the, in his hometown area because you know he's from Jersey. I'm like, I don't know if that work, that might work there, man. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, he was, he was down here with the Hornets for a little while. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. Yo, we're going to go to another track real quick, and then we're going to be back and continue this conversation with uh, Jason Maravich. Yep, it's ice, it's on the ride Don't want to get some time out there so that I can introduce myself Anxious, baby, I do it myself I've been trying and I'm true to myself And I've been running the jump and I want to sign you to get me in the game and know the rise So it's safe to say I'm on the rise Yep, it's ice, it's on the ride I want to get some time out there so that I can introduce myself Anxious, baby, I do it myself I've been trying and I'm true to myself And I've been running the jump and I want to sign you to get me in the game and know the rise So it's safe to say I'm on the rise Yep, it's ice, it's on the rise Yep, and I'm rising like weed smoke And I'm riding with my people Soaring like egos Up against the horizon Trying to have a little bit of fun while I'm young Can you blame me? I'm strong, having fun with a lady You got me stumbling, mumbling, baby I'm hypnotizing, I'm hitting eyes And I'm getting by and I'ma get this right I've been surviving, I'ma spend the minds But I'm emphasizing, I'ma live my life My pen is flying, my friends is live And you know I gotta shout out Adam V And I think I know why them haters mad at me Yep, it's ice, it's on the ride Nobody gets a time out just so that I can introduce myself Anxious Baby, I do it myself I've been trying and I'm true to myself And I've been running the jump And I want to sign you to get me in the game And know that rise So it's safe to say I'm on the rise Yep, it's safe, it's on the rise I want to get some time out just So that I can introduce myself Anxious, baby, I do it myself I've been trying and I'm true to myself And I've been running the jump And I want to sign you to get me in the game And know that rise So it's safe to say I'm on the rise Yep, it's safe, it's on the rise Yep, and I'm steadily increasing Beat is heavily beating Readily feasting Not a beastie boy, but you can say I'm beast and I'm rocking shows like daily on a roll like E. I'm getting dope like Ray Me, Fa So Lati. And I'm with it with the big time dude. Try to put a little something on the big time move. Try to hit it, get the jumper when it's midnight too. Beautiful women are all in my crew. And I've been chilling with the essays. They call me loco. Keep the white girl like iced tea. And we both color cocoa. I'm coming with a click that'll bang it. Take the lead and maintain it. From A to Z, I stay anxious. I'm major league and I'm famous. I'm coming up and I run and jump and I end up some. Where in the stars This big boss Anxious baby Yep you know I've been in charge Plus man as far as I've been concerned Put it in the egg It's a thing to burn I'm still grinding Just an astronaut In a spaceship On some rocket science And as far as bosses go I keep two or three with me Shout out Luna Lilo Da Vinci Yep it's Ace It's on the ride Nobody gets a time out just So that I can introduce myself Anxious baby I do it myself I've been trying And I'm true to myself And I've been running the jump And I want to sign you To get me in the game And know that rise So it's safe to say I'm on the ride Yep, it's safe, it's on the ride I want to get some time out just so that I can introduce myself Anxious, baby, I do it myself I've been trying and I'm true to myself And I've been running the jump and I want to sign it to get me in the game and know that rise So it's safe to say I'm on the rise Yep, it's safe, it's on the rise
welcome back. This is Prophet Fuego Beast Radio. We've got my man Fuego, and we're back with Jason Maravich. What do you say? What's good, uh, Mr. Jason? Hey, what's going on, man? Now, I wanted to ask you now with your time with the Mavericks and the whole uh, Summer League deal, I wanted to ask you, you know, it was a pretty good experience, but as far as, like, skillfully, did it kind of make you better as a player? Oh, uh, without a doubt, man, um, because you learn uh, so much from those guys that have been, especially the vets that have been in the league for so long, they just teach you, like, little tricks and trade and all this kind of stuff. But uh, I could tell just from playing probably from – just coming in and doing drills with them just for two weeks, uh, could see a, a, an improvement, man. Because uh, when you're playing against guys that are that good, it kind of brings the best out of me, and you, and you get this sense where, like, well, I gotta make sure I play up, play up to my potential play as hard as I can, or you know, you're gonna get embarrassed. So, um, right. I definitely think it. I definitely think it, it helps playing against that caliber of player, man. It, it definitely improves your game. Definitely. Oh, most definitely. Definitely. I know what you're saying, uh, Fuego. Well, I was gonna ask one one thing. I, I really, really wanted to know was like, what what is it like being the son of a Pistol Pete? Like, what what is that like, or what was it like for you just all your life? Like, I tell people it, it's like this double edged sword. It's like a curse and a blessing at the same time. Okay. It's, uh Especially when I was younger, because I was I was a real shy kid and I didn't like attention. And uh, I remember when I was in ninth grade, I was averaging like thirty eight a game. And Billy Packer from CBS wanted to do a TV interview with me. And I'm 14 years old. And I said, man, it's too much for me, man. I just, I can't, can't deal with all this attention and stuff. Uh, and like during games, it was funny, like, uh, before in warmups, we'd have all these people asking autographs and stuff. And I, me and one of my friends on the team would switch jerseys and they'd go <laughs> heckle and, hurt, and go heckle and bother him, man. Well, I was just free to do what I wanted. So, you know, that, that only lasted so long and it caught on and they knew I, knew I was, but, um, it, it, I'm, I'm proud of this could be it. I would never trade it for nothing, but at the same time, it's hard because uh, I remember, just to give you a little quick example, in junior college, uh, my high was, I think it was, it was either 52 or 53. And um, mm-hmm. and they, the article the next day in the paper was a guy that said, uh, great player but no repeat, and it was spelled R-E-P-E-T-E. And it, and it was talking about um, how my dad averaged like 44 in college and how that would have been almost like an average game for him. So my coach called him and blasted him and said, I mean, how you can't, you know, he could, he actually told him word for word. He's like, there ain't been five players as good as his dad. He said, you ought to be comparing him to the guys he's playing against instead of comparing him to his dad all the time. Exactly. Um, so that actually, you know, helped me out a lot because I had, uh, because when you, you know, you go out and score 52 points, I'm feeling good and all this kind of stuff. And you read this article and it's like, man, I can't, I can't win for anything, you know? Yeah, yeah, I, I feel you on that. That's that's wild. Um, yeah, you know. So I guess I, what I what I want to ask again is uh like so right now, um you know what's what, what how do people approach you now? Like do they still you know swarm you? Yo, let me get your autograph. Let me, you know, I mean, what's up? Can I do an interview? Like you know, kind of like we did, or do do they really like swamp you um, like that still? No, I mean, I live in a, it, it's kind of like a small town where I live. I mean, we're, we're across the bridge from New Orleans. So, I mean, it's, oh. um, it's, it's, everybody, I, I know like a lot of people around here and stuff. So they don't really, they're not asking me for autographs or nothing, but they, I've done, I do interviews every once in a while. I, I did them a lot, but then I kind of stopped doing them because I just, I mean, I didn't want to keep doing them because everyone was always asking the same questions and everything, but I, it, it, it ended up being, uh, it, it's, I don't get bothered or anything like that. I mean, I, I play ball at all kind of different gyms around here and stuff, and uh, everybody's cool. And I think in Louisiana, it's magnified even more because mm-hmm. um, the Mavericks name, especially like in, in Baton Rouge, New Orleans, and anywhere in Louisiana is, is really, really big. I mean, I know it's big a lot of places, but down here it's like, uh, no. it's really, really big, so. Um, yeah, yeah. I had a couple of um people. They went down to like a um they had like a conference down in New Orleans, and uh, it was like crazy. They said like, like it's like wild. And I, I damn, you know, I know a couple of people from your area. Well, well, that Louisiana. That is, I don't know about your specific, but one of my parents, right, right, right. you know, they was from out there, and it was. I mean, they see they were good people. So I'm like, I'm pretty sure you know everybody around there, are good people and everything. But that, yeah, I that's mean, that's 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 definitely. Uh-huh. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I can tell. I can tell you this, man. It, it, I I get. I I'll probably get a different story or two every day from somebody. 
like uh, people that run locked and play, and then they tell me the story, and they get the biggest. You can tell when they tell them the story, and they smile, and they get. You can tell how much they enjoy watching and playing and stuff. I mean, that's always good to hear. Oh yeah, yeah, that is, that is definitely. Like I guess I was looking at the stats, and I'm like, yo, first thing in my mind, I was thinking about the game where we we trying to do that charity event. Um, let everybody know too. Fuego Beach Radio, along with JSNL and for Block and Request Entertainment, we're trying to do next year a uh, um, charity basketball event. And I do want to get Jason out here. Of course, you know he's gonna be on Fuego Beach Radio squad. Of course, <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all gotta know that already. We're not losing. I'm just, I'm trying to tell y'all. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure Prophet agrees. We're not losing. There's, <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna lose. It's we're not, not gonna happening. Lose. I'm, I'm that confident. And I'm usually not like that, y'all. I'm usually like not, but I'm confident that we're not losing. Um, we don't know the other team. Everybody's like, yo, we want to run with y'all. So we got to get another team. <laughs> you know, because everybody want to run. We got, we're gonna have to have tryouts now. Let me stop. But, <laughs> but uh, the other thing I was gonna tell you, man, before I forget, was uh, one of the one of the most uh, asked questions I get is the, the game in the Superdome when you had six eight against the Knicks with uh, Walt Frazier and Monroe. Uh, they had so many people that said they went to that game and uh, that they always asking for the tape or DVD if we have it and stuff. So, oh, dude, I mean. Do you? <laughs> no. Yeah, <laughs> Not I, think, this. Uh, I got it on a new tape, I think. Uh, I actually got a, um, I got a friend's dad that uh, he actually met some guy. I don't know how he met him in New Orleans, man, but he used to do the, he used to be the program player or something, but he uh, actually, the other day, gave me uh, about eight pages, and it was actually, it was pretty cool, every possession that was documented in the game, like mm. where every point came from, and uh, they had a bunch of quotes from Red Holzman and stuff, so it was really cool. I know that a lot of people, like, I even, I've, I've heard a, a lot of people, you know, say that a lot of their game, I mean, pros and amateurs, that they've had yeah. in themselves, like, they looked at Pistol Pete and was like, yo, I, yeah, I, I've got to learn that. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, when we... Well, and they're doing the um, the 50 greatest players thing in Cleveland because me and my brother were there to represent my dad because he had passed. Yeah, we had we had like I mean it, it was one of the best weekends in my life. I mean you're sitting we're sitting me and my brother were sitting at a hotel and we see Will Chamberlain walk in and then Dave Robinson and then uh you know Magic and uh we just sitting there like starstruck and then I remember um I remember when Magic came up to us and said yo man your dad was the original Showtime you know when you hear stuff like that it's just uh. Yes, uh, Isaiah, Isaiah Thomas telling us he was the best ball handler he's ever seen, and um, it, it, it was people just Charles Barkley was telling us stuff. I mean, it was it was just unreal, man. I and mean, that, you really get we got we got an appreciation for you know for how, how, what he meant to, and everybody always says they try to take something from his game, especially all the point guards. Oh no, they do. Like I like when you watching him and you watch Nash. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. You see that. You watch Jason Kidd. Yeah. You watch Darren Williams. They all have right. that, you know what I yep. mean. And I, you watch LeBron and Magic, because Magic yep. to me looked like looked like you you know, tried to emulate a little bit of your father, and then LeBron does both. You know what I mean? As far as the passing yeah, skills exactly, and everything. Man. That's what the yeah, that's what the, the great players do, man. They look uh -huh. the great players in the past and try to try to incorporate some of that in their game and add whatever yeah. whatever their talents are. And, that's, and uh -huh. that's good. So I was gonna roll. Uh, that's actually a question I was gonna talk to about the fifty greatest um, when when you uh, were over there because I I seen that you know you guys had to represent your father and everything. So um, uh -huh. how was it to meet those great? Like I know you met Jordan, and I'm pretty sure like I've never met Michael yeah, Jordan, but I know that's the an experience. Jordan thing is, we, we, we never met. I mean, we didn't see Jordan in the, like the hotel before the actual uh, halftime, where we had to go on the floor. Okay. And right before, we, uh, right before we went out, he had, he was just coming out. It was halftime at All Star game. He was sweating. He put on that. Those jackets were awesome too, by the way. Those uh, fifty grade jackets. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, he, Jordan was just slipping his jacket on, man, sweating, and he comes up and gives us a fist bump. So what's up, fellas? You know, I mean, it was uh And I, I was seventeen at the time. My brother was fourteen. So you know, that was. You know, it's almost like one of those surreal things. We're, we're, we're sitting shoulder to shoulder with Jordan Magic, Isaiah, and all these, you know. Um, and we got, right before we go out, we got Iceman George Gavin telling us stories and laughing. Yeah. He, he was a great guy, man. He had a great sense of humor. But uh, we got we were actually sitting next to George Gavin, Tiny Archibald. Mm. Um, Damn. 
that experience was is a once in a lifetime, man. We were around, you know, 50, 50 of the greatest players for 49, you know, that ever play. So, I mean, it's, and then the cool thing was we got to talk to people from different eras. Like, we even got to meet George Mikan. So, I mean, oh, wow. before he passed, well, um, oh, yeah, we, we, actually, we actually talked to him in an elevator, man. He, he was a really, really nice guy. Yeah. Yeah, that, that scene, I mean, it looked, like I said, we were all um, watching that, obviously. I was young. I, I mean, how old was I when that when that came? When, when, I can't remember what year that was. That was, uh, that was 97 when, uh, 97. 97. So I was actually, your, I'm actually your brother's age then, because I was 14. Okay. I was 14? Yeah. yeah, 14 in 97. And that, yo, that was like, wow. Like, you know, I looked and I'm like, damn, you know, all of these players, like, right here, I, I know, and Prophet, like I said, he was there. I know we went to the court, like, if not that night, we went, we went right in the morning, like, and we was balling, like, and and it's just, like, one of those things, you know, you get amped. You know, I'm 29 years old now. I'm watching, you know, the Pistol Pete story, and I'm like, it's 2.30 in the morning, and I'm like, where's my ball? <laughs> like, I'm like, where's my ball? To this day, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm trying to get, like I told you before, back in shape, and I'm doing drills, and I'm, I'm not trying to make it to, no, of course, no league, but it's just that love, like, it never, it never leaves you, you know what I'm saying? That's one thing that, no, again, exactly. I never have to, I'll never have to make money from that ever, and, and will never leave you, like, that's, I mean, basketball has been, like, like I said, since I've seen the ninth, actually, Jordan's first championship, that's the the first one I saw. After that, I watched um, the next year. Then I watched the Dream Team, and I was hooked. And I I was yeah. like I was like eight or nine when I started, and it was like it nonstop. I mean, you know, and it's just to see all those players uh, like in one spot is is ridiculous. Like, I wish I could have been back there, like you know, to officially, you know, see your father like live. You know what I mean? When I say live, yeah. I mean, even if it's just TV. You know, I, I, always, I always thought about that. If I could go back to one specific moment in time, any time in history, man, I, I'd want to go. I mean, of course, I'm biased, but uh, I'd want to go to one of my dad's games, man, because yeah. I know a lot of people that went to LSU games and the Jazz games and, and the Dome, Superdome, they used to tell me, they said, it wasn't so much a game as it was an event, because uh, the, yeah. the, they said, he, we were put on a show, and then the, the, it was funny, because one guy told me, he said, the first question we always asked was, not if the Jazz, not if they won, or LSU, not if they won or lost. The only question was, how many did Pete score? Yeah. Uh, that was, that was <laughs> all he ever had, you know. That is crazy. I, mean, actually, I got, got articles in the house, man, of him. Um, it'll say, like, Pete held the 38 points in a, in a loss. And it, it's funny that you see somebody with a bad game held the 38 points. That's, That's just exactly, my mind. Exactly. 38 points would have been, like, I would have been talking shit to everybody and <laughs> with, with, no, with no with no three point line either. Yep. Yep. That's the that's the crazy part. Dan Brown mean, used to man. coach LSU. Yeah, Dan Brown he used to coach LSU. Actually went back and tracked all his old games at LSU and they said with a three point line it would the average would have been about fifty five, fifty six. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Like, I mean, and you watch guys, even the Europeans, I mean, I would just, who's the first when talking about your father? What European player comes to mind? Um, and I'm talking my thing. I have a person in mind. That's I mean, a good question, man. I mean, I'll tell you somebody who I, – I, I, he, he, I'll tell you the first person that popped in my head, and I don't think necessarily they play alike, but he, this guy's got like a lot of flash and, and awkward moves at Ginobili. But, um, I, I was about to say I, either Ginobili or Rubio with – Oh yeah, yeah. Well, Rubio is uh, more passes, of a look. No doubt. His passing ability is, is uh, exactly. It does remind me a lot of uh, Ginobili more so. Just some of the awkward shots he does, and uh, you know, yeah, Euro step uh, and all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like that's that's the two first, two. Yeah, go ahead. Drive the goal, or throw it around his waist. You know, like uh, uh, around the world, around his waist, and then finish all the sides and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, yeah, Rubio. Rubio, I love the way he passes, man. He's uh, he's fun to watch. Me too. That's another team I'm, I was saying that's about the Minnesota is they they looking good. I I think they make the playoffs next year. I, I agree, man. Oh. Uh, I I can't believe how much better Kevin Love's gotten, but um, they yes. I think they're about another play away from definitely making the playoffs. Yeah. If if Rubio didn't go down, they definitely would make the playoffs this year. But now. Yeah, 
That's the case. I am. I th- I think if not this year, the following year they'll definitely make it. Like like I I'll be very surprised if they don't. And that's that's if everybody's healthy. Um, yeah, I think they're 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 one or two years away. I think they need one more player like just to. I don't know what they need, but mm-hmm. they're, they're fun to watch, though. I definitely like watching them. Exactly, exactly. So right now, we're going to go to another track, and we're going to come back and wrap it up with uh, Jason. Um, you listening, of course, to Fuego Beats Radio. Hit up FuegoBeats.com for this interview and more. But we'll be right back. Yo, yo, what's going on, everybody? Fuego Beach Radio and um, Fuego with Profit and uh, Jason Maravich um, talking about everything from how Profit is a clown to uh, uh, you're funny. <laughs> to Xbox. And, yo, everybody that wants to play 2K12, hit me up, 
Fuego Beats is the uh, gamer tag. Um, and holla at me, man. Play. I, I need to play T Wells because he was talking shit. He was talking. He was talking big. So I need to see what's up. What I can get with, and I know Jason, you said you play. You a gamer too. I can't get with that. What? Um, with the team up stuff. I can't play with somebody like like that. You know what I mean? Like when you play, uh, like y'all all on the same team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On on two K. Yeah, I can't get with it like that. No, I don't either, man. I, you know, I like playing just by myself because um, when you get a bunch of guys playing the same team, everybody wants to score. Just like I guess like in real life, right? Exactly. Exactly. Or they'll have me on a bum. I'll have a bum player and shit. I'm like, wow. Because I wanted to be either a point or I wanted to be like exactly. on, on some Dwight Howard or something. But they had me like, like I'm, uh, what's it called? Uh, Jason Richardson one time. I was like, I ain't feeling this, dude. I'm not, <laughs> I'm just not feeling it. Man, he a good player, but I just was not feeling playing with him. I was like, and I didn't want to play with Nelson either. I wanted Dwight. I just wanted to dunk on everybody. And block shots. Yeah, because when, you, when, you, when you're playing with a bunch of guys on the same team, you got to get a team that's got a bunch of superstars because either that or you can get stuck with just someone you don't want to play with. Exactly, exactly. I got lucky a few times. Like, I had OKC. I had Durant. I was like, cool. I could rock with oh, Durant. Yeah. I had Mayo when I was uh when he was on, messing with Memphis. Um, right. You know what I'm saying? But uh question I did have, man, because I don't you know, want to keep you longer, but the uh, – what what are you doing now? You know what, what what is it? You know now and you know are you, are you coaching? Are you still playing as far as competitive like on that level or? Uh, well, yeah, I'm not playing for anybody right now. I mean, I still play every day, but just like do uh, my own workout and then, like I play pickup all the time. But uh, I'm like for my job right now. I'm training kids like um, individual sessions like basketball, like oh, okay. uh, an hour long each, like okay. every day. And then um, usually like during the summer, the hours are kind of here and there because everyone's out of school and everything but like usually when school starts back up in the next couple of weeks I usually have to school go for about uh, four or five hours with different kids and uh from any age to like eight to 18 and and just work on you know what their weaknesses are in their games and all that kind of stuff but okay. mainly, mainly like mainly guard stuff like you know ball handling shooting um footwork all that kind of stuff okay. have you ever thought about possibly going into the realm of coaching by any chance I mean, that's a, you know, man, I, I actually tried it one year. I tried it, uh, I think it was 09. I think I tried it, and um, I, and I just I didn't like it at all, man. So I, I, I'm not, I don't think I would. I mean, you know, one thing ever, but I, I didn't like it, man. Uh, I, I hate to say it, but it, kids nowadays are lazy, man. I, I just, yeah. like, I, I was out there, man. I wanted to win more than they did, and I said, there's something wrong with this picture. So, uh, <laughs> I just wanted to, I wanted to tear my tie and suit off, man, and go go out there and play myself, man. I was like, y'all are just, you know, I don't know. It just seems like kids nowadays just got everything, like, handed to them, and they got, like, we were talking about, like, you know, I don't know if the Xbox and Facebook, all these distractions or something, but it seems like no one, like, in groups like they used to, man. I, I remember when I was a mm-hmm. kid, we never, I could go over any block around here and find a pickup game now. It's just ain't no one playing outside anymore. Right. No, and I think that's what actually happened to me. Because it was everywhere. Like, we used to ball, I mean, at all the time you could find it. I mean, it would be like, you know, when you're 16, 17, you would go, you know, do your morning workout. You know what I'm saying? It could be a Saturday, whatever. Do your morning workout. Then you get a pickup game, like 3 o'clock. You make sure that you're good and you wash, you know, you got your shower and everything so you can go on your date 7, you know, and you're cool for the rest of the day. But you always play ball. Like, that was it. Like, after school, uh, sometimes, like I said, it depends how dedicated you were before school. You get your workout in. I mean, it, it was. Oh no, what are you saying? Oh no, I was gonna say I don't see that anymore at all. Like, I mean, I, I actually um, the gym by me. That's where I go. Um, I don't go as consistent as I really want to, but when I do go, um, they have a couple of guys like um, Kendall Marshall. He used to go there. He used to come up there. Okay. Now that I remember, okay. I was like, oh, that did he look familiar? Because actually, shout out to my man Nemesis, aka Hiawatha. His cousin and, and also Omega a miss. You know what I'm saying? He um that's his nephew. And we we uh yeah, I was like, Oh, I know him because we ball with him. Him and his man that looked like uh Mari Stoudemire. Dude looked just like him too, son. This dude his boy. But it was like they I see they work out, they was working out and everything like that, and um a couple of other guys, but there was like I mean they were lazy. Even the trainers were lazy on it. 
I'm like, mm-hmm. I mean, what kind of training is this? I was like, my, and you're getting paid what? To just... I know. It was crazy. Like, get this, man. Get this. We play pickup at this uh, athletic club on uh, a couple nights a week, like two or three nights a week at this one club. Mm-hmm. And it's a mix a mix of younger and older guys, right? But we play at 6.30, yeah. and we usually go to... We try to go to 8.30, man, but the younger guys end up quitting before the older guys, man. <laughs> they, they, like, wow. They, 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 the 21-year-olds will leave the court before the, the 30- and 40-year-olds do. And I said, there's something wrong with this picture, man. It is. It, and it's true. Because I know we... Yeah. I play... Um, uh, I haven't, like I said, I haven't been down there in a minute, but it was uh, like a Catholic church or school, and the principal, you know, um, he lets it, he opens it up, he plays with us, and some of the high school coaches, and it's like, oh, I mean, when I say old people, they, these dudes could be my father, like a lot of them, and they run, like we start at 8 o'clock, and I remember I didn't get home until damn near 1. They was bought, yeah. I mean, uh, and they got nothing but energy. These old yeah. and the, no and the younger guys like we had an eighteen and a nineteen year old that used to come with us. They they out at at nine thirty. I don't know if it's because they they want to you know get with their girl or they want to do. I, I just don't. I just know in high school it just wasn't that serious. I was never in a relationship that serious. It took me away from bowling or anything like yeah. that. I, I just, exactly, I, I, man. I actually had a girl I was talking to in uh in, in college and uh, she stopped talking. Because she said I spend more time in the gym than her, and I said, "Well, I mean, I that's guess the that's uh, the way it's got to be, man." Because uh, I said I'm not gonna be skipping workouts just to hang out all day. Then, well, you know, uh, yeah. well, that in, in, you know, plus kids, you know, they might play two or three games of basketball, but then I guess after a while, you know, they got this mentality like you know they're, you know, they're older than you know what they are, so. They, they have to, you know, go go off and do better things, you know, do more adult stuff because they feel they're older yeah. than what they are nowadays. So, right, you know, right, right. It's crazy because, you, know, you know, back when I was in high school, we were out from like 11 o'clock in the morning until like 8 o'clock at night, basically until the park shut down. But nowadays mm-hmm. you don't see that anymore. Mm-hmm. No, then, no, not at all, man. In, in, high school, in, in high school, I was uh, in the gym on Friday nights, man. I was like an uh, outcast because everyone else was drinking, partying, all that. I was in the gym on Friday nights, man. But, but nowadays, they, they don't even open the gym on Friday night. They keep it locked up. Nope. Yo, I'm going to tell you. That, and that's that's the reason why I, I'm i trying to get with these. Because um, there's a lot of, it, it's I call it secret society of basketball players. <laughs> because there's no serious. They be bought like this some. You you gotta know the right person. Like this, my my man um, around here. This dude Courtney. Matter of fact, shout out to Courtney. He put a. He's like Mr. Basketball in the, in, in the D.C. Maryland Virginia area. He knows about every gym, every pickup, and you like. I didn't even know a gym existed here. Where did, <laughs> what and the, and these guys are like really balling, but it's not like that frequent. Like I could just walk around the corner and see people playing ball. You know what I mean? I mean they, I don't know what they're you know. The best I have is when I I'm catching secondhand smoke from these young boys that profess to play semi-pro somewhere. They they pretty nice, but they what they, all they do is smoke they smoke cigarettes in between like pickup games, and I'm like, okay. Uh, no, I've, I've seen that. I've seen that too, man. That's just uh, yeah. You just laughed at that, man. You like um. Actually, when I was up at the Portsmouth camp, that top fifty seniors camp, <laughs> I saw a couple dudes uh. Right after the game, man, we uh, we get back to the hotel. They were going to smoke these big old blunts, man. I said, See, we got a game in like an hour. I'm thinking, man, I, I don't understand yo, that. Yo, yo. Now, wow. Prophet, I'm not calling out, and I'll tell you after, but there's somebody that we know well, and this dude was like one of the fastest cats that we I ever seen, and he could ball, football. He still plays football, and he used to, blow, he used to smoke before and after games. I don't know how he had... He didn't just drop dead. I just don't know. I'm like, yo, how did you do this? But it's just like, I mean, that's one in a million. I mean, you know, dudes that could actually stay like that, stay focused and do that. I'm pretty sure, you know, there's a lot of players that do stuff like that. But it's just a matter of, yo, I got to be focused. That's how I was back then. You know, you kind of mm-hmm. lost that. Like I said, you know, once you said, well, I have to get a job now, then you stop, you know, you decrease your workout. You decrease, especially when you run with a crew that doesn't do what you do. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, that, I think, I, think yeah. I, I was going to say, man, I think, too, man, another point is, like, I, I don't know as compared to, I know a lot of guys that used to play back in the day, but it was all about just 
wanting to be in the NBA so you can say you're one of the best and you can compete against the best and because you love to play. I don't know how many guys play now for strictly the love of the game. I think there's so many other distractions now. I think they play for the money, for the fame. For I don't know how many like actually love to play, like get in the gym at 6 in the morning and shoot 500 jump shots, all that kind of yeah. stuff. It's, to me, there's not a lot of players that do that, man. Yeah. Like Kobe still gets up every morning. They say it's 6 o'clock yep. and does his routine. You know, yeah. Yeah, there's very few guys like that. Yeah, but one thing I have, Kobe, I just and, and Prophet is a dedicated Kobe fan. I I have loved. I mean, Kobe said I've been watching him since the McDonald's All American. But Kobe, mm -hmm. when you retire, retire. Don't do a Jordan. I do not want to see a, a Kobe like Jordan on the I Wizards. Agree. I don't want to see that. Please, you're not going to see that. Just, gonna see that. I don't, I, yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't see him doing that. I Me think he'll I think he'll play another two, three years. He said he might retire for two, but I think he'll play long. I think he wants to get a bunch of more records. But I don't see him. I think once he's done, I think he's gonna. He might go back to Italy and play or do something like that. But I don't, I don't think he'll be done with the and NBA. That's, and that's that's what I, I'm thinking because he's actually he would have had to if he did what Jordan did. He would have had to retire like maybe 28 or something and then come back. But right, right now, right, right. it would be very hard for him to come back and I think be effective like that. You know what I mean? Retiring. Right. Sitting out for a right. few, and it, it, I don't. Th I think he knows better than that. You know what I mean? But just, just in case you don't know, Fuego said, "Don't come back." <laughs> Let's stop. <laughs> I, I, I hate, oh. and it sucks because I, I, I seen. I mean, I seen his entire. I seen Shaq's entire career, and that's wild. Like all of these dudes that's yeah. like older now. Like, damn, I remember yeah. you getting drafted. I know. I actually, you know, it's crazy, man. Speaking of that, I was in Cleveland, ninety-seven to fifty guys players. Mm -hmm. That was Kobe's rookie. That was Kobe's rookie year. I watched him win the slam dunk contest. Yes. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. 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 I remember having. I remember. Having, I remember watching that. I was like, man. I now I think about it. I'm like, man, that was sixteen years ago. He's thirty-three now. I'm like, man, that time flies, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Flies. Speaking of which. Speaking of which. How do you? Uh, like the U.S. team's uh, chances right now? Uh, uh, I like. I, I think they're definitely the favorite. I like their chances. I mean, I, I didn't get to watch the Lithuania game. I was surprised it was that close. But um, uh -huh. like, uh, I, I played with a couple of guys on that Lithuanian team, like Dave Sengal and another guy. I played with them. I know they, they're good players, and uh, they've been playing together forever, so I know they – but uh, I think they, that was. I think it's probably a good test for them because I know they they're going to start playing better teams now that they're getting out of their uh, mm -hmm. getting towards the, the end. But I think Spain can give them a good game, and Russia supposedly beat Spain in their top seed right now to, to play them in a, in a gold medal game. So I, I, I definitely think that uh, they'll win. But I, just to bring this up, man, I still don't think they'd beat the '92 Dream Team, even though. <laughs> Everyone's on, everyone's on this discussion. Everyone's going to be uh, talked about it at practice. I think it's a fun discussion, man. But I, I got to go with the original Dream Team. The reason I now, say I agree is because there's no way they will be able to muscle. Because you had, it's just a different element. I mean, yeah, you know, Gasol and them are muscle. But just Robinson and Bark, I mean, they just, just the, their whole attitude. Well, I agree. That's, that's what I think, too. I think, like, you know, Tyson Chandler has no chance of matching up with Ewing and Robinson, and Carl Malone was a physical freak. No I mean, way. they, they, that, that, I think their mentality was a lot tougher, too. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Kobe, to me, to me, on this Olympic team, like, Kobe today is only, like, uh, he is, yeah. Kobe's the only killer. Like, he, he's what that mentality, like, you know, like, what a lot of those guys had on the old dream team. Yeah. I yeah, say, I say more, maybe Chris Paul. Might be the only other yeah, one. I was, I, was, I was gonna say maybe Chris Paul because he's extremely competitive too. Yeah, but that's but but that's I, it. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry, Prophet. But I mean, as as a whole, I mean, you 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 can see it in the other teams' demeanor. Like they're not afraid of us because you know you know no. back in '92, '92, mm -hmm. they were not afraid to play us because they knew it happened. Well, or yeah. knew already knew the outcome. They were gonna get beat up by 63 points, 55 right. points. Yeah, I, I you know it's just crazy. Yeah. No, I think that's, that, that's a good point. With, like, the Dream Team faced way worse competition than this team does because the game has evolved and you got players from all over now. But uh, yeah. I think just from, like, a matchup standpoint, when you look at all the matchups, because a lot of the guys on the Dream Team were actually in their prime. Like, they, Magic and Bird and uh, were the only ones who really passed their prime. Everyone else and, was and in Clyde, their prime. Clyde probably, Drexler. That's, that's about it. Right. Right. Everyone else was in their 
everyone else was mid to upper 20. So, I mean, mm-hmm. and Jordan was in 29. So, I mean, and Kobe, the, the reason I think they beat this, because this, this Kobe is, is not the Kobe I really, when I think of Kobe, I'm thinking of the 28 year old that scored 81 on the Raptors and stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, he's, still, he's still a great player, but he's not, you know, he's past his prime now. I mean, he's, you can tell he's lost a couple stuff, even though he can still score a will, but. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Definitely, but y'all. I I know this this def this interview's this conversation was great. You know what I'm saying? And exactly, um man. I mean we g- glad to have you and like again if you want to co-host anytime on this show, but we're going to talk about that sports show because if you guys didn't know T Wells, Keys and uh Fuego Reese Radio as a whole, we're going to co- collaborate on a little sports show and we want to see if, you know, Jason wants to be a part of that. He definitely said he's interested. Uh we just going to tell him what's up. And um, definitely want to bring him into the family. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we de- you know, we'll definitely be in touch about that. Now, Jason, did you have any um? Uh, before we go, did you have any uh contact info? People where, where they can reach you at as far as like social media and stuff like that. Uh, like yeah, I can give my email. Um, email is a good way to get in touch with me. Is that cool? Yeah, sure. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because uh, on the Facebook, man, I, I'm I'm not on it much, to tell you the truth, man. I'm on it, like, you know, I'm on it once or twice a month, maybe, just to check and see what's going on, but I, I'm not on it much. Um, my email, I got to check every day, so I definitely can get in touch with people that way. Okay, right. cool. So, um, did you want to say, or did you want me to just, uh, when I post, yeah, that's it, fine. post that? It's, uh, it's, okay. it's J Maravich, J-M-A-R-A-V-I-C-H. 44 at yahoo.com. Oh, okay. That's simple enough. All right. That's what's up, man. But definitely, we're uh, we're definitely, you know, I'm going to have you on the, this show again. And I def, like I said, I definitely want you to get together with T-Wells and, and Big Keith to talk all sports. And uh, I think that's going to be oh, a yeah, fun love, show. <laughs> yeah, I love talking sports, especially hoops with y'all, man. Definitely. That's what's up, man. So, uh, we will definitely holler at y'all. We're going to play some more music, and um, we'll see y'all. And I think we need a house Kids, option, I need it on the hill My slip game poppin', I need a big bed We can get it rockin' Baby, I'm so into you I hope I'm dead right and I'm not just confused You're a problem, I'm trying to solve them When I'm on the road, it be you that be callin' You say fuck a hater, keep ballin' And if you wanna make it, quit stallin' These are eyes I wanna see in the morning The voice I wanna hear as I'm tourin' Yeah you're a dream come true Maybe cause I'm so into you me 
the moon, kid. Young, hey, dangerous. I'm feeling it in my pancreas. Haters not gonna anger us. If I was me, I hate on us. I'm so fly, attached to the air like headphones. Did you get the line? Did you catch on? Blood suckers trying to latch on, but I pay them no mind and tack on. All of my successes, not kind of by how many necklaces are on my neck. Yeah, this is a song for all of those kids who had a dream. The same boat as me, but now we're here. Rockets fly to the moon, screaming the pick up tape. 10% skill, lady of that is worth the other 10% is tolerance. You want the hurt if you want to make it big, flying high with the stars. Stay true to who you is and know we are who we are. Feeling like a superstar, it ain't even made it. Fame is a drug that's fine for the taking. Stay in my zone till I got ice and cream in me like cold But even then I never be so far gone Staying true to me, hippie lifestyle chose Just want some peace and love And honestly I have no trust in our government Yet they're full of it I'm just trying to show the kids that If you have a dream Skill lady of that is worth the other ten percent is tolerance to all the hurt. If you wanna make it big, flying high with the stars, stay true to who you is and know we are who we are. Feeling like a superstar, we hate you the name it. Fame is a drug that's fine for the taking. You wanna make it big, flying high with the stars, stay true to who you is and know we are. I remember back in the day I was called the loser, called the lame now Everyone started to know my name It comes for life, the misfits run things Yeah! It comes for Thanks, Cash. Hey, yo, what up, everybody? This is Fuego Beats with Fuego Beats Radio, of course. That's what you're listening to right now on FuegoBeats.com. Uh, just let y'all know, man, we're going to wrap the show up right now. It was a great show. Had a great interview with Jason Maravich. And, uh, yo, the dude is good people. I'm going to need y'all to hit him up on his Facebook. He don't check it like that, but still hit him up. Give him some love. Uh, but hit him up definitely at his email. He left his, his information. Also, we're going to uh, post his information on the website, uh, Twitter, and on Facebook. Y'all already know the website is uh, FuegoBeats.com, Twitter, FuegoBeats Radio, and the Facebook, FuegoBeats Radio. So y'all need to stay connected, as we always say. And big shout out to the whole crew, FuegoBeats fam, of course, for Block fam, JSNL. Um, and GBG Music Group. Y'all need to definitely contact my man Young Guap doing big things over there. Uh, you know, Guap TV at Gmail. Y'all already know. And then y'all need to definitely hit up JSNL online for all the gear. I mean, they got it all. Yeah, man, Asher Roth was rocking that and exhibit. So y'all already know it's not a game with the gear, man. And I know y'all need it. Falls coming up? Ha! Huh. Y'all need it. So hit up my people at JSNLonline.com. But, uh, yo, like I said, it was a great show. Had a crazy topic in the beginning. Had a great interview. Y'all need to make your comments on the website. Or on, you can hit up the YouTube. I already know it was Mr. Fuego Beats over there. 
We also got Fuego Beast Radio uh, YouTube. Hasn't really been populated like that, but you guys can hit it up anyway. Uh, big shout out to my people, though, uh, my man uh, Javis. Big shout out to him and his Sci Fi 64. They doing it big over there. Uh, y'all can check them out during the week on 